In this episode, we are going to implement the voting mechanism and the logout functionalities in our Angular application. We will use Angular guards to protect the secured routes. And finally, we will wrap up this episode and by the series by doing some refactoring in our backend application. To easily follow along, I recommend to check out the written version of this tutorial, which is the first link in the description section, where you can find the complete source code and go through the tutorial at your own pace. So without any delay, let's start coding. Okay, we have already created the vote button component in the previous video when refactoring our homepage. We have the upvote and downvote icons and inside the HTML, the click directive for these icons is calling the upvote post and downvote post methods. But as of now, we are not doing anything inside the components. Before starting the implementation, we need to create the vote service class where we can make backend calls to the vote API. So inside the terminal, I'm going to type ng.js shared slash vote. This will generate the vote service class under the vote folder, which is inside the shared folder. Inside the class, we are going to first inject the HTTP client class and declare a method vote, which makes a post call to a vote API. If you open the Swagger documentation, we need two fields as part of the request payload, vote type and post number. I have already created a class called as vote payload, which contains these two fields and field vote type is an enum called as vote type where the possible values are upvote and downvote. Back to the vote service, the vote method takes the vote payload as an input. And here, as I said before, we are making a post call to the backend. Now, if we look inside the vote button component, we have first injected the vote service, auth service, post service, and toaster service classes through the constructor. We declared and initialized the vote payload object inside the constructor. Then we have upvote post and downvote post methods where we are setting the vote type for the vote payload object and calling the vote method. And this vote method is setting the value for the post ID field, which is coming as input from the parent components. And after that, we are calling the vote method of the vote service class, which returns us an observable. And then we subscribe to this returned observable. And in the case of a success response, we are updating the vote details like the vote count and also an indication whether this post is either upvoted or downvoted by the user. The upvote and downvote fields are newly added to the post model. This helps us to decide if a post is either upvoted or downvoted by the user. If the user is not logged in, then we obviously don't see any indication whether the post is upvoted or downvoted. So we are receiving these fields from the backend. So let's jump into the IntelliJ idea and inside the post response class, you can see the two fields upvote and downvote. These two fields are mapped inside the post mapper class under the map to DTO method. I've added two mappings for each field where we are calling the methods is upvoted and is downvoted, which in turn calls the check vote type method, which finds the latest votes submitted by the given user and compares it to the vote type which is being passed in. And we are doing this only if the user is logged in. If not, we just return false. So the next task is to implement logout in our Angular application. Implementing the logout on the front end is a simple task. We just have to delete the stored JWT and refresh tokens along with the user information from the local storage. After that, we will make an API call to the backend to delete the refresh token so that it won't be possible to rotate the JSON web tokens. We can quickly have a look at the Swagger documentation. So here all we need is a refresh request payload object which we can construct it on the fly. So first let's go to the header component HTML5, where we are uh, calling the logout method inside the click directive of the logout button. We are just calling the logout method inside the auth service, where we are making a post call to our backend. This call returns a string as response, which we are just logging to the console. Then we are clearing all the details which are stored in the local storage, like the username, authentication token, refresh token and expiration time. As we are in the auth service, I would like to show you a small change I did to the, to the login method. So here after storing the token and the user details in the local storage, we are emitting two values from this class. The first one is a Boolean flag called logged in. And the second one is a string called as username. So these two uh, output variables are actually used in the header component. So you can see these two fields are marked with output decorator. 
we are subscribing to these two fields inside the header component and whenever the user is logged in the auth service emits these values to the header component and we can see the username and the drop down information in the header section at the time okay the next task is to protect the secured routes in our angular application that means some of the routes in our application should only be accessible when the user is logged in in angular we have a concept called guards which tells the router whether to allow the navigation to a particular route or not so there are different types of guards but we will use the can activate guard in our scenario to generate a guard we can type the command ngg g auth slash auth which stands for ng generate guard with the name auth under the auth folder you will be prompted to select the kind of interface you would like to implement as i told before we are implementing a can activate guard so you can select the can activate option and press enter now the guard should be created successfully inside the auth guard class i first injected the auth service and router classes and inside the can activate method we are first checking if the user is logged in or not by calling the is logged in method from auth service if the user is logged in then we return a value true or else we redirect to the login page all right now the next step is to configure the guards in the app routing module so i am going to open the app routing module.ts file and inside the routes array we are going to add the can activate property for the user profile create post and create subreddit components and as this property takes an array and we just have one single value we just have pass in uh, the value auth guard okay we have implemented a lot so let's open our browser and start testing first i would like to check whether the logout is working or not so let's first open the developer console and under the application tab local storage make sure that we have the token and user details now open the application let's log out from the application and check the developer console again you can see that the values are not there anymore so that's good but if you check the home page you don't see any posts or subreddits inside the sidebar section this is because the endpoints which are supposed to expose this information are secured if the user is not logged in then we don't provide the token as part of the request and we don't get any response back so we have to exclude these two endpoints in our spring security configuration i'm going to open intellij one more time and inside the configure method of the security config class let's add entries to permit the calls to the get all subreddit and get all post api notice that i specifically mentioned to permit only the get calls that that means spring will not try to authorize these calls for the token in this way even the visitors can see the post in our application now i'm going back to the visual studio code and uh, here i'm going to show one last change i did to the token interceptor class inside the intercept method i added an if condition where we first check if we have a valid token in the local storage or not if yes then we add this token to the authorization header or else we just send the request without any headers on it in this way we prevent unnecessary errors in the back end because in the previous way we used to always add the authorization header even even though the jwt is null or undefined this fix brings us a bit of consistency to our authorization process so now let's go back to the application and now you can see we are able to see the posts and subreddits in the home page even though i'm not logged in now let's try to log in and if i try to click on the upvote icon you can see the green color and if you try to upvote again you will see the error message as a toaster notification saying that we have already uploaded this post so the only possible action is downward and if you try to downward again i again see an error message with a different message now that you cannot downward the post we can also upward and downward from the post page so let's click on the read post button so you can see that the color indication is uh, also visible in this page now let's try to upward and the arrow turns green again so all right that brings us to the end of the episode and also the end of this tutorial series It was very exciting to produce these videos and I appreciate all the encouragement from you guys. So thank you very much for that. If you followed the series all the way from the first episode, I salute you, I salute your enthusiasm. I hope this series has helped you in learning something new. Please let me know what you would think of the series, what you liked, what you didn't like. Please provide your feedback in the comment section and also tell me which kind of tutorials you would like to see in the future. I will see you in the next tutorial series and until then, happy coding techies.